Well, hey there, everybody. Today, I'm going to be modifying this Commodore 64 to output pixel perfect HDMI in less than 60 seconds. It's coming up right now on the Retro Hack Shack. Well, hey there, everybody. My name's Aaron. Welcome back to the channel. Longtime viewers may remember a video where I installed a mod to a Breadbin Commodore 64 that outputted crystal clear HDMI quality video. That modification required me to install a big uh, PCB where the VIC-2 was and then install another PCB up by the RF modulator, desolder the RF modulator, install a bunch of wires, get all that working. But we did get really good quality HDMI output using those mods and the RGB to HDMI device I sell on my website. Well, there's been an update. Copper Dragon, the person who uh, actually uh, came up with that mod for the C64 initially, has been working on a new mod, and it's much simpler to install, much smaller, and it's extensible because of a new protocol I'll tell you about in a little bit. I decided to challenge myself to try to install this modification in 60 seconds or less. But first, let me show you all the parts and pieces you're going to need if you want to install this mod yourself. The first thing you're going to need is this relatively new board here. This is from Copper Dragon, who also made the previous mod I showed on my channel. And it's called the Vic2 Dizer in this case, the Vic2 Dizer. And there's multiple versions of this that I will talk about later. This one happens to be the Vic2 Dizer. And as the name suggests, the Vic2, of course, is the video chip that's inside the Commodore 64. So this is what I'll be using today. This board uses a very tiny FPGA down here here in the middle and some other logic chips and things and it is small this chip is going to go where the VIC-2 usually goes and then the VIC-2 is going to plug into the top of this board right here now you see these two pins right here so the next thing you're going to need is something to plug into those pins and there are cables available as well on Copper Dragon's Tindy store so here is the cable that uh, is going to plug into the board here, and that is eventually going to connect to the RCA jack where the composite output would normally be. And then from there, you're going to need this special cable, which goes from the RCA cable in the back of the Commodore 64 to, of course, the RGB to HDMI board that I sell on my website. So, so many of you have purchased this board from me. Thank you so much. Uh, all those funds that I collect do help uh, support the channel and they also help support the RGB to HDMI project. So thank you so much and thank you for your patience as we've been waiting for, uh, you know, certain chips to come in that have been in short stock since the human malware uh, bit us in the butt. But anyway, yeah, so for the RGB to HDMI, you're going to need a Raspberry Pi. I'm going to be using the Raspberry Pi Zero. Uh, I think this is a the first version of the Zero, but you can use a Zero, Zero W, Zero Two, whatever you want, or any of the, the more modern Pis as well. And then we will be using the RGB to HDMI, HDMI mainboard, of course, and the analog board. And when you look at these components, you might notice one thing. Specifically, this cable here only has two connections on it. And of course, one of them, since this is pretty much anything electrical, is going to need a ground. One of them is going to be a ground, and the other one is going to carry a signal. But this won't allow you to attach this to a normal TV. In fact, once you install this mod, you won't be able to use a normal TV with this Commodore 64 anymore unless you reverse this mod. And that is because the VIC-2 dizer and the other dizers <laughs> in the family here um, actually use a brand new protocol called LumaCode. LumaCode is a brand new protocol designed to take the video data from a vintage computer or game system and transmit that in various voltages to a video scaler like the RGB to HDMI. The signal is very similar to a monochrome video signal in that it transmits a voltage between 0 and 1 volt but in this case, it's divided into five specific voltages that represent either a sync at zero volts or different bit patterns at four other voltages, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1, divided somewhat equally between zero and one volt. 
In fact, if you were to plug in this LumaCode signal to a composite television or monitor, you would actually be able to see a black and white representation of the image as it may appear natively using a standard composite signal and a composite monitor. By using this spread of these five voltages, a device like the RGB to HDMI is able to decode these bit patterns into exact colors that match what the system is outputting. For example, the Commodore 64 has 16 colors, so those 16 colors can be encoded by just using two of these samples in between each sync tied together to represent a 4-bit number in binary from 0 to 15. Other computers, like the Atari 8-bit computers that have 256 colors, can also use this same protocol. They just need to transmit more samples to capture all the color data. Each system will need its own version of the board to match both the video chip that that particular system is using and a profile will have to be created in the RGB to HDMI to match that particular board. It's a very flexible system that can accommodate a lot of different early computers like this and I'm really excited to see what's going to happen with LumaCode in the future. If you'd like to take a crack at designing mods for your favorite retro computer, look no further than today's sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay offers inexpensive PCB manufacturing and a whole lot more. Need assembly services? No problem. They can do front side, back side, through hole components, you name it. They also offer 3D printing, CNC milling, and more. So check out PCBWay for your next project, and I thank them for their support of the Retro Hack Shack. All right, it's time for the one minute test. I am a little nervous here. I think I need to warm up a little bit. Okay, I think I'm ready for this. I have not done this before, but uh, I will say I've done some things that the normal Commodore hobbyist would probably have done with their system. Like if this were a breadboard, you would have taken out, probably taken off that uh, cardboard RF shield. In this case, the RF shield has some soldering, which I've removed. And I've also taken the screws out of the case. So giving myself as much advantage as possible. The RGB to HDMI is set up and ready to go. I've got it plugged into the RCA connector here. But other than that, <laughs> which this sounds kind of like a lot, I know, but this is one minute, guys. This thing is basically stock. So it doesn't have any mods done to it. Uh, haven't really been in here or done anything to it before other than to take off the screws and look inside. So I've got the VIC-2 dizer ready to go. Got all the tools I need here and just in case something goes wrong. So I think we're ready to do this. Okay, Google, set a timer for 60 seconds. Okay, one minute, starting now. Yes! Oh! <laughs> oh 
my word, my heart is pounding right on time. One minute, one minute to get this mod installed and get crystal clear HDMI quality video from the C64. I can't believe it. Okay, Google, stop. Wow, one minute. I didn't think I was actually gonna be able to do it, guys. <laughs> that was crazy. But I did do it, it is working. Now, one thing, I'm not sure if the, uh, if this is coming across on screen, but this is kind of stretched out. I'm not sure what mode I'm in. Uh, okay, I am in 60 hertz mode, so that's good. So yeah, let me put the, uh, let me turn this off and put the shield back on and we'll type in a quick program just to ensure that everything is actually working and it is a real C64. 20, go to 10 and run. There we go, 60 second challenge complete. Did I spell challenge wrong? <laughs> I hate doing this live on camera and I don't like to edit it. I like to show this stuff live. So the challenge, it must be French. Uh, is there. 60 second challenge complete, working C64, HDMI, unbelievable. So let me turn this off and take the power out and I'll go back through and show you exactly what I did in those 60 seconds. So the first thing you saw me do was actually remove the VIC-2 from its socket here. Lucky, luckily that wasn't in too tightly, but I removed the VIC-2 from its socket and put the VIC-2 dizer in its place and then put the VIC-2 chip back on top. These two leads here are the special cable that goes up to the RF output, or the RF modulator here. And all I did was I just snipped the little uh, wire that was in here, right down in there. I snipped that little wire to be able to connect this directly to where the RF signal would normally come out. And then of course you just need a ground connector from this. Now this can all be neatly wrapped up. You can see at least on this model, the C64C, there's plenty of room here to kind of neatly wrap these things up. You could even take these off and solder this on if you wanted to. So there's lots of ways to make this neat and tidy in here. You could even, if you were to maybe cut a hole in the in this, or actually you don't even have to because it's already got a big enough hole. You can take this wire, sneak it through here, and then all of these wires could be, you know, kind of go through this hole and then coiled up in here and you could even put this back on top, which is pretty cool. Keep everything nice and tidy and kind of almost looking like stock, except for those wires and the uh, the VIC-2 dies are there. And then of course, that sends the Luma code through the ribbon cable over to the Raspberry Pi, and that decodes it and sends HDMI, crystal clear HDMI output to the TV. And that's how it works. So, wow, pretty exciting, super easy. No real soldering required, except like in this case, obviously I had to take the the shield off. Um, your mileage may vary on that, but I had to take my shield off. So there is maybe some soldering that you, desoldering in this case that you have to do, but that should be pretty easy for anybody. No real difficult soldering here. And then you can get that hooked up in one minute, guys. Although tech, don't do this at home actually, because it would be very easy to bend the pins on these chips and they're pretty rare. So yeah, maybe take your time when you do this. Don't do it in 60 seconds. All right, so now I have the Commodore 64, which is uh, behind me here somewhere, uh, which has the older mod on it. And I have this Commodore 64C, which has the new easier to install mod from Copper Dragon. And I still can't believe I was able to do that in 60 seconds. I mean, I, I, I'm shocked that that worked out so well. I thought for sure uh, I was gonna have all sorts of problems, but it actually worked. So it says that it can be done. It just goes to point out how easy this mod is to install. It can be done by beginners with very little to no soldering involved. And so I highly recommend going out to Copper Dragon's Tindy page. I'll place a link below to that page so that you can find it easily or down in the description someplace. Uh, go check it out and because there's now LumaCode, that's really a key here. Now that there's LumaCode, these boards can be created for other systems. So if you go check out his Tindy page, you'll also find uh, dizers, <laughs> like the VIC-2 dizer. You'll also find that for Atari 2600, Atari 800 computers, uh, Commodore 128, and the VIC-20. So these boards are starting to come out uh, for more and more systems, and that's because of the LumaCode method that Copper Dragon and Ian from the RGB to HDMI 
uh, project we're actually able to pull together. And I think we're gonna see a lot more of these in the future and uh, I could not be more excited. So if you like videos about the Commodore 64, I don't do a ton of them on this channel, but I do have a nice size playlist that you can check out. I'm gonna link that on the screen. If you wanna click on that, then I will see you in one of those videos next. End of line.